What's up, Internet? Today we're talking something spooky. Singletons. Let's talk about how to get rid of them. So I'm not here to, you know, preach. I'm a singleton user, you know, pretty frequently. It's really easy to get things done quick. We can get things done fast. Didn't mean to scare you with the low lighting. I know it's pretty cringe. Today we're going to be creating static event channels that can throw events to listeners that are anywhere in the game. They don't need to know about each other. All they need to know about is this static event channel. So without further ado, let's go into a project. We'll see how to convert a singleton with a lot of dependencies into a kind of just a its own structure that can still throw events and have, you know, certain functions call each other throughout scripts without having this, you know, line of dependencies that can just be a nightmare when it's time to test. Let's just, let's go in. So here we go. We have this game that, you know, whatever, if you could call it a game that I created, it's like a space game where you are, you know, through going through time, you know, time's going forward and you're trying to terraform this planet, right? It's not the most beautiful game in the world. It's kind of just like going in prototypes. But what I wanted to show you is how to decouple this code, right? So right now the UI changes when you select and it's using a singleton with some weird event to get that going. So let's go look at the selection manager and see how this is going down. So right now we have a public event that is being accessed by a singleton on UI main, right? So it's going to the instance. So basically the UI is requiring a, se a selection manager object to exist just to be able to work and, and not throw an error. So that's not good practice, right? We want this UI to exist without whether or whether, you know, whether or not this selection manager object is in the scene and active. So what I want to show you is kind of the problem with singletons and having, you know, so many dependencies. So if I were to turn this singleton into just a mono behavior, right, and we save it, we're going to see what kind of errors show up. And if you look here, we have six errors, and that is because we are using you know, we have, obviously that's six dependencies that require this selection manager just to exist, just so they don't throw errors. So let's go and fix one of these. So here we go, we have the UI main. And so basically what we want to do is kind of create some kind of event, a static event that this can invoke and this can listen to without having them exist. So one, uh, what, what I'm going to do is, you know, just keep and maintain, you know, the cleanliness of everything is I'm going to go in scripts. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it event dispatchers and we will create a new c sharp script new c sharp script called selection event we'll say we'll call it channel okay and get rid of the mono behavior get rid of all this nonsense here and you know we can clean this up a little bit so basically what we want is a static class when we call it a static class, the class can exist without being instantiated, right? And everything inside of it has to be static. So it kind of prov provides a little bit of protection so we don't start creating random weird things. So now we're going to create a public static event of type action, just like that has. And we're going to say, I, what is it, selectable? That's what we used. And literally, we'll just put select, right? So the reason you're, you're not just doing a public static action is and you're using an event is because with an event the only thing that can call this event is this class anything can subscribe but the only thing that can call it is this class so the way to protect this event and make sure it's not calling some weird stuff is just go public static void and we'll say on select and basically what we're going to take in is a selectable and here we'll just literally call select question mark which means if there's any listeners then do it and invoke it's just checking in if it's null right and so now, if we want to subscribe to the event, we just subscribe to select. And if we want to call the event, then we call selection channel dot on select, right? And pass in our thing. So now to make the little change here, we just delete this. We don't need that anymore. It's going to give us this error, right? Easy fix now. So we do select selection event channel like we have here dot on select. Pass in our selectable. And there we go. Same thing here. We're going to do on select and we're going to pass in null. And so now we have our select and deselect invoking. Let's get let's let our UI miss, listen to this, right? So it's very simple. Same thing we got to do. All we got to do is turn this little instance thing that selection event channel and subscribe to select. Same thing. Again, right here. And we've literally decoupled our code. 
gotten rid of a dependency. Now our UI can exist without our selection manager in the scene. If you want to go see me like renovate an entire project with this method and get rid of, you know, unnecessary singletons, we can do this. Uh, I'm not saying singletons are bad, but I'm saying I can, I can kind of show you how to renovate a project and kind of go through and refactor. If that's something that you'd be interested in, just comment below and say, yeah, I want to learn refactoring or honestly just comment anything you want to see in the future. That's basically how, you, how I would go through reducing dependencies. I would have all my events, you know, turn into static events. I would kind of have any, anything that, that is calling directly a game object. I would just turn into either a static event or if it needs to access some sort of data, I would probably put that data in a scriptable object just so it's easier to track, right? So I would have my data containers be scriptable objects and my event dispatchers be static events or even scriptable objects. And from there, we have a game that can be reused with other projects. We can have a selection system that now does not have to exist within this project, right? It can go anywhere else. I can take a selection system. I'll be like, okay, I want to click and select. Now, all of a sudden, I can bring that into any game. If I want to make an RTS, bring it into the RTS. If I want to make, you know, I don't know, a, a mobile game where you're picking the right outfit, you know, that can go there as well. So the ability to modularize reuse code is where this comes in. So if you like this video, leave a like, uh, leave a comment. If you want to tell me something that you didn't like, tell me something that you want from the future tutorials. Tell me how you want the tutorials. If this is a good style, a vibe, let me know. And if you want to continue watching tutorials like this, please subscribe.